Why can't you remember what you wrote in your notes? I'm willing to bet my med school tuition that this is a thought that most of y'all have had one point or another. Some of you are probably taking the most pristine and aesthetically pleasing notes. You put so much time and effort into these notes that there's no way you can forget anything that's on there. But then when the test is put in front of you, you draw a complete blank. The traditional style of lecture-based learning just isn't working for students these days. It encourages you to take notes on what the teacher is saying, copying down what they say word for word and what's on their lecture slides. Lecturers should change their style of teaching so that we can learn better, right? That's it. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. Please, please, please hold your applause. I know. No, of course not. I have a better explanation. There's already plenty of evidence that in this age of technology, our learning ability in lecture is suffering from a severe case of digital distraction. It's what causes us to have divided attention while we're taking notes during lectures. Now, I'm a big supporter of digital note taking and I'll explain exactly why later in the video. But students taking notes on their laptop are distracted over 40% of the time. The number of students distracted by other students' laptops is over 50%. So what am I getting at here? The the problem is not necessarily what you put in your notes, but how you take your notes. Because the process of note taking is far more important than the notes themselves. So in this video, I'm going to describe how I took my best notes in medical school by understanding the process, function, and product function of note taking, active versus passive learning, the three pass approach, dual coding theory, the Feynman technique, and the best note taking apps to use. So let's get into it. Note taking serves two purposes. There's the process function and the product function. The process function just refers to the short term memory boost you get from the act of writing the notes. I'm sure you've experienced enhanced ability to remember what you're learning after writing it down. The product function refers to the physical notes themselves. It's what you save for future review, organization, and comprehension. But it's the process function of both taking and reviewing your notes that encodes the information into your brain. You might fall for the mental trap that if you don't take notes on every single detail, you'll lose or forget the material. But in today's education system with virtual lectures, downloadable PowerPoints in YouTube University, you don't need to stress about that anymore. So many of you watching this video are smart as hell. You smart. You very smart. And the thing holding you back from getting the grades you deserve is how you're taking your notes. The next concept to understand is active versus passive learning. Passive learning happens when you just write down things word for word without reflecting on them. A common thing that students do is they just look at the slides and write down whatever words are on the slides. It's just transcribing words from one page to the other. It doesn't make you think about the content or the reason behind the material that you're learning. It's when you engage in active learning when the material really sticks with you. And active learning is more like looking at the material and thinking critically about it, why the information is important, and how the different points relate to each other. So for every phase of note taking that I'm going to talk about in this video, active learning is key. The real difference maker here is that you invest more of your working memory in active learning versus passive learning. So when you try multitasking in lecture by texting your crush, or watching Netflix, but you're still writing down what you see in the slides, you're engaging in passive learning. But when you're focused 100% on what's being taught, let the material start to make sense to you before you write things down, then you're engaging more in active learning. When you try multitasking in lecture, you're using up the majority of your mental bandwidth, 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 that you need in order to understand the concepts. For us, that bandwidth or working memory is very limited to begin with. Think about it this way. If your working memory was your Wi-Fi router, it would be like trying to load this YouTube video while your roommate is playing Call of Duty in the other room. So now let's get into the nuts and bolts. There is a simple note-taking framework to understand a high volume of material that I use in medical school. It's called the three-pass approach. The idea is that it takes three passes of each lecture for your understanding of the material to gradually come into focus. And I like to think each pass as serving a specific purpose. After the first pass, you'll be able to recognize the material. After the second pass, you should be able to remember it. And after the third pass, you'll be able to understand it. So now you know the framework of note-taking that many students in medical school use to remember boatloads of information. Here's how I use the three pass method to remember almost everything that I learned in medical school. The first pass is your first exposure to the material. Don't stress about getting everything written down perfectly word for word because you're not going to remember everything on the first try. 
write down the information as it flows through your stream of consciousness and write down whatever words, doodles, sketches, diagrams, or tables help you understand in a way that works for you. But listen closely to what the lecturer is saying. If you allow yourself to get a decent understanding of what's being taught the first time around, it'll make it much easier to recall that later on while you're reviewing. Nowadays with virtual learning, lecturers will often get posted online for you to review at home and they'll give you the lecture slides to download as well. But if not, a nice trick is to make your own recording of the lecture. Lectures have a way of telling you what's important, either by their tone of voice or just by telling you straight up. These can be easy to miss if you're not paying attention to their body language because you're too busy trying to write down exactly what they're saying. Now, there are some important ways to make the note-taking process go much more smoothly, both for taking the notes and for reviewing the notes. Digital note-taking on a tablet or laptop is perfect for students who need to be mobile learners because you can access your notes from your laptop, tablet, or phone with an app that syncs across all your devices, you can access your notes from anywhere. The best ones to use, in my opinion, are OneNote and Notability. It's so clutch to have access to your notes to either review them or add to them wherever you are on the go. Surveys of medical students have shown that digital note-taking apps have been really helpful for improving students' ability to review and remember their notes. So OneNote and Notability both allow writing, typing, creating tables, diagrams, and copy pasting images from the internet or from the lecture itself. If you want, you can even upload PowerPoints and PDFs to both of these apps to assist with your note taking. You can even upload your lecture slides to both of these apps. And I think one of the most important things is they both have a search function. In med school, I used OneNote because it was free for students, but now I actually prefer Notability in residency because it has a handy dandy toolbar that's really simple and easy to use. And it also has handwriting to text conversion, which is super helpful even for my chicken scratch. And a nice trick to taking good notes quickly without using too much of your brain power is by using your own shorthand. I'll show you the kinds of shorthand I use that has helped me take notes five times faster. I use a lot of acronyms for long compound words that are commonly used in medicine. I use arrows for showing cause and effect of things. I learned this trick from my neuroscience specialty in college that shows this little triangle thingy for activating something and this little line for inhibiting something. And I use that for the parts of medicine that involve like pharmacology, molecular biology, cellular biology, and the possibilities are really endless. Um, you can be creative and come up with your own shorthands as long as you understand what they are and what they mean to you, then you can use that shorthand to really streamline your note taking process and be able to keep up with lecture while still writing down coherent notes that make perfect sense. So onto the second pass. The purpose of the second pass is to organize your notes. By consolidating all of the information from lecture in a way that makes even better sense and has a better flow, you also organize the material in your brain and in your memory. Remember, your notes should be written in your own words that helps you understand the best. Also, this is where I like to fix my typos. You wanna to try to get through this pass the same day that you had the lecture while it's still fresh on your mind. This is when you really put in the work to make sure that you know and understand the material. Now is when you have time to go to Google or YouTube to fill in the blanks of anything that didn't really stick with you. You can find pictures and diagrams on Google Images that help make sense of the material for you. Of course, don't forget to put things into categories and subcategories that flow well and add any comments, drawings, or exclamation marks that help personalize the material for you. Now, I just wanna re-emphasize, this pass is when you really should look to third-party content to help you understand things that you still don't get. To give an example, I remember when I was learning about the kidney and I had absolutely no clue what was going on during those lectures. It was so complicated and, and I just was completely gone, lost. I thought I was gonna fail the exam. So I had to find somebody on YouTube that would explain this content well I found Ninja Nerd lectures on renal physiology that made the content more simple and easy to understand. When you start including pictures in your notes, the concepts stick with you much longer. And that's because of a phenomenon called the dual coding theory, which simply states that using different sensory stimuli 
to teach you the same concept will help you learn it more efficiently. So finally, by the time you're finished curating your beautiful masterclass of a note, your notes are ready to be reviewed for the third and final pass. Now, the third pass is my favorite because most of the hard work has already been done by this point. Personally, I find it best to do this pass at least one day after your second pass. I like to have a night of sleep in between to kind of help you know, consolidate the material. What you need to do during this pass is just review all of your notes, start to finish, making sure at every point that you have a good understanding. Read through each one to make sure it makes sense to you. Typically by this point, you'll have a much better understanding of the lecture as a whole, but there are always gonna be those little pesky concepts that can't seem to stick to you. You're gonna have weak points that you just can't seem to grasp. And trust me, I've had so many of those that took me like so many tries to figure out what it meant. And that's when it's time to deploy the secret weapon. The Feynman technique. According to the physicist Richard Feynman, if you can't explain something to a first year student, then you don't really understand it. So here's how the Feynman technique works. First, identify a concept is really difficult for you to grasp. Then once you've done that, explain the concept to someone in the simplest terms you possibly can. The process of explaining something will expose your knowledge gaps. So once you identify those knowledge gaps in the process of explaining it, then go back to the concept and try to simplify it further in terms that you can explain to a 12 year old. The more repetitions of that you do, eventually you'll be able to explain it to a 12 year old and you'll finally understand the concept fully. So that is a quick summary of the three pass method that I used in medical school to take fantastic notes. By the time I finished med school, I had my own personal digital library on OneNote with all the material that I need to know for my exams with images, some color coding and underlines where needed. So just to do a quick review, cause I know it was a lot. In this video, I discussed the process and product functions of note-taking, active versus passive learning, the best note-taking apps to use, the three-pass approach, dual coding theory, and the Feynman technique, and how understanding these learning tools will help you remember everything for your exams. Thanks for watching, and I hope you didn't take too many notes. Now, before we begin, I will be taking attendance. Is there a Brad? Bradley? Bradford? <laughs> hey, yo, what up, bros? Here we go, boys. Bradford, I have a feeling this will be a long semester for you.